the internet is a vehicle for putting for output for young comedians. Yeah. And also, I mean, I know you've kind of wrote a lot of scripts that haven't necessarily been commissioned or whatever. Yeah. Do you ever feel that maybe you could publish them online? Or well, I mean, a lot of things are up online. A lot, yeah. a lot, a lot of things are on my website, and so a lot of the plays I've done that nothing's happened with, and you know, I think some scripts that. I mean, it, I I don't want to put things up until they're definitely dead, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you never know when things are going to come around again. So probably the more recent things aren't up there. Uh, but you know, I think the internet's a very exciting place to explore things, and you know, I think it's good to do. You know, some people are uh, anxious about it being free or losing money, or you know. But actually, I think, as you said, you know, people are coming because of the podcast. So as long as they come to the, it's, it's the same as music. You know, people aren't paying to for music anymore, but they're going to see. They're paying to go and see things, and that's how you make your money from it. So you give something away for free on the internet and show people that you're funny, mm -hmm. and then that's an advert both for people to come and see your shows and for TV companies to go, oh, let's get him on the show, or let's have a look at his script or whatever. Yeah, and I've written a lot of scripts. Um, I'm in a lucky position because I get paid to write my scripts, whether they get made or not. You know, so I can make I can make a good I could make a good living to the rest of my end of my life and never have anything on TV again, possibly. You know, um, and it's frustrating. There's a part of me that wants to just put it, you know, to make it and put it on the internet because I'd write as a, I'm a, I'm a creative person. I'd, I'm more interested in the stuff existing than in making lots of money. It's nice if I get paid for stuff, uh, and I get paid quite well, and I do, I'm doing quite well, but that's not really my motivation at all and so it's just frustrating to spend a lot of time and I went through a big period of time where it was too frustrating to even write anything that I just lost the will to write because it's too painful to write something and then not have it made you know to do because it's hard writing something writing a book is really hard writing talking cock for that book was really difficult for me and then it just kind of got buried and it's so un, you know it's so un, such an unhappy experience to kind of have written something you think is good and you'd love people to see and that the people who read it are sending you emails going, this is amazing, this should be at schools, and you know, and then just by chance, you know, a lot of the things I've done just have disappeared from view or are very cult or very underground, and that's up, all right up to a point, but I would like to, you know, it'd be nice to get to the point where just TV would make my scripts. You know, I'd, lo I'd love to work on TV, I love TV, I grew up what, loving TV, and I think I've got some great ideas for TV, and, and I'm good at writing scripts, so it's frustrating, but then it's, but then the more I do stuff on the internet, I kind of think, well, why not just do, you know, I kind of think, why not just do a sketch show on the internet? an audio sketch show yeah. and if you know and, and as things go maybe kind of just film things for the internet which people are yeah. doing and so I think, think that's that great. might happen in the future then, yeah possibly. yeah I hope so you know I'm getting a bit old to put it all together you know so yeah. I kind of I kind of I don't really understand it all so I kind of quite I think as a young performer it's a really interesting amazing time to be in because you can actually you know it's possible to put stuff together and it's cheap enough to do it I mean just making our DVDs that we you know, the DVDs of the shows is now cheap enough to do and it's commercial and funnily enough the internet makes it a cottage industry that's commercially viable whereas 10 years ago no one would have made my DVDs because they'd have gone well that's going to sell 2,000 copies that's no good but go faster stripe you make my DVDs selling 2,000 copies is amazing mm. and you know no one's making huge amounts of money out of it but it means the show exists and it means they can you know it doesn't cost them that much to put on a show we have to sell like 250 DVDs to cover all the costs and then the rest is profit they're very cheap and we don't make a lot of money, but it means they exist, and then these shows exist, and it's for comedy fans, you know, rather than rather than going, let's make millions of pounds and sell hundreds of thousands of slightly shitty DVDs. Let's make some good DVDs. Yeah, that's, that's a great company. Go fast yeah, yeah. So you know, so it's just great to have them to have the shows existing, you know, and also just think, well, at least that's there now. Yeah. Some if someone now realises that I'm good and likes this show, they can now look back and see at least the last four, you know, and then hopefully might shoot a couple of the others as well. Um, but you know, otherwise they only exist on like illegal copies on the internet, you know, mm -hmm. audio copies. So kind of back to the podcast very quickly. Um, you've done a couple of live Collins and Herrick. Yes. And um, obviously you're both very busy people. But do you think there's any possibility of like maybe a mini tour or? I think we, it might be where we move with it. Actually, we've got we're doing. I mean, we're going to try and do like five nights in Edinburgh, five afternoons in Edinburgh, and sort of do five podcasts in a week. Yeah. Um, if we can find a venue. And we've been, but so you know, start the people were starting to get asked about it, and I think it might be the way to do it because we've been we've been booked for a theatre in Brighton in May, I think it is, and I actually think we could just go out once a week and do it some, you know, in a theatre somewhere, and charge people to you know, charge people to come and see it, and then that's a way of actually generating some income. Yeah. Uh, and you know, because the, the Brighton Theatre is like a three hundred seat theatre, we're kind of getting paid properly for doing that. For doing that podcast for once, which I don't think the ones we've done in Edinburgh we weren't paid for, and yeah, we did a charity one, was the other live one. So, you know, I think that might be an actual way forward to just do it in front of an audience. We had a mixed re mixed reaction with it. And I think the second one was a lot, a lot of people didn't know what it was going to be, and it was like it wasn't really quite our audience, and it was, it, and I, we were a bit drunk, and it was kind of interesting. But 
Would you improve the sound quality, do you think? I don't know, we might do, we might not. I mean, it doesn't bother me, you know, it's, work, it's language, I think it's people showing off a little. It's just, you know, it's people talking, yeah. and so that might matter for if it's music and whatever, but there's people who are very snobby about it, and obviously it ma matters to them, but I just don't think it makes that much difference, and I think the rawness of it is part of it. Yeah. And the danger of making money from it is that then people expect it to be really good, you know, because it's free. It means we can have one that doesn't work or one that's, you know, that's interesting. But if we start charging people for the podcast, we'd have to go, well, we now need to sit down and yeah. write this and, you know, and, and, and then it's a different thing. But what's great about it for me is it's just literally he turns up and we spend three hours in the house together and an hour of it we're talking to each other on the, and the other two hours we're just having a laugh as well. So, you know, it's quite, it's a nice regular thing. But yeah, hopefully we'll do some more live ones. I don't know exactly whether it'll be a national tour. I don't know whether we'd come up to York to do it, but it, I, maybe we would. You know, maybe when I, you know, it might be on the next tour, for example, it might be fun to punctuate the tour by putting in in the podcast on That'd a Thursday or whatever, you know, yeah. or a Monday or whatever day you don't have a gig, and and then he could come up, you know. 